It's like Game of Thrones with super PACs. I mean, when we talk about the negotiations that are happening behind closed doors, I think a lot of people say, what is what is left to concede at this point, right? We, we've already sort of outlined some of the changes that the Freedom Caucus wants. It sounds like McCarthy gave in early with not a, a, without asking much in return. We now know, based on some reporting from Punchbowl, the, the Congressional Leadership Fund and the Club for Growth, two Republican super PACs have come together in an agreement that seems to be moving the ball forward in these behind-the-scenes uh, negotiations. Can you distill the essence of that agreement and what the impact will be on, on the party and the sort of conservative wing of the party that seeks to gain more power within the GOP? Sure. There were, there were outside political allies of McCarthy who, in recent campaign seasons, would wade into Republican primaries. And these were primaries in really safe Republican districts, and they would try to throw a little bit of uh, a little bit of shade and support behind the more establishment-friendly Republican in a primary to try to knock that person uh, to knock out the more sort of Matt Gates style Republican out of the primary, and so that became a, a big sticking point. And some of the Freedom Caucus people have been very angry about that. And it's it's very tricky legal terrain there. You really can't, as members of Congress, tell independent super PACs what they can and can't do. Um, they got to be very tricky on how they word these things. But by agreeing to not sort of go into those primaries in these safe Republican districts, they're trying to basically tell the Freedom Caucus types, look, we're going to stay out of this. It'll be a fair fight. Your candidates versus our candidates in these safe Republican districts. And they think that might flip a few votes McCarthy's way. So just to be clear, what they, the changes we're talking about, the, 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 the agreements that are being hashed out by outside super PACs in terms of how to, speak, how, to, how to choose a Speaker of the House, which on its face seems like something that's not really legally supposed to happen, nonetheless, could make it easier for the Andy Biggs and the Paul Gosars and the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world to gain entry into Congress in terms of the primary process and the, the elections process. In addition to that change, we're talking about rules changes that would allow committees to defund federal agencies, that would gut the Congressional Ethics Committee. I mean, these are big changes, very controversial changes. And it sounds like, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, no matter who the speaker is, that person is going to have to agree to these changes that Kevin McCarthy worked out. So this stuff is going to happen no matter who is ultimately chosen. Is that right? I, I think it's going to be really hard. And if you get into a situation where Kevin McCarthy bows out um, and Scalise, you know, becomes the de facto uh, front runner, it's going to be really hard for him to get 218 votes if he just says, oh, no, I'm going to tear up that agreement that you guys had with McCarthy. I think you're going to have a situation where they are going to say, these are our terms and don't it's it's not your fault that Kevin agreed to these terms, but you got to live by them if you want to get that gavel. So, yeah, I think you're going to look the objective here in a lot of ways that what these Freedom Caucus types are doing uh, is to try to make the speaker position as weak as possible. They want to make that person not have much power and that would make life easier for them. That's what they're really trying to accomplish here. Weaken the speakership and embolden the insurgency. That's what's happening here yes. in America, House of Representatives, January, whatever day it is, 2023. Washington Post <laughs> congressional reporter Paul Kane, thank you for your time and your reporting tonight. Thanks, Alex.